Welcome everyone to JM Lectures. We are covering the first unit of grade 12 physics, thermodynamics. So let's just hop right into it. This is the 16th question of the series and it states the following. If the internal energy of a system decreases, then what can be concluded about the heat and the work done? Okay, this question has to do with internal energy. And internal energy is as straightforward as it sounds. It's just the energy within the system, okay? The internal energy, which you represent by U, has a specific formula. This formula has to do with the increase in internal energy. This is very important. The increase in internal energy is represented with the, form with the following formula. Change in W plus change in Q. All right, so what do these two things mean? What does change in W mean and what does change in Q mean? Well, change in W means work done on the system. Change in Q means heat added to the system. So the key words here for work done is that the work is done on the system. And the key word for heat is that the heat is added to the system. For there, this is literally the definition of internal energy. For there to be an increase in internal energy, work must be done on the system and heat must be added to the system, okay? And it technically makes sense. If you consider a system and you have, and you're trying to find how much energy is inside the system, you add it to the work done on the system, which will increase the internal energy, and the heat added onto the system, that will also increase the internal energy. But if we look at our question, the question is asking us about the decrease in internal energy. So what would be the formula when we consider the decrease in internal energy? Well, the formula is actually the same. It's the change in work plus the change in heat. But these, this W and Q represent things slightly different. Let's try to take a guess. Well, if an increase, if an increase in internal energy was done when work was done on the system, then a decrease is probably done when work is done by the system, okay? So if the system itself is the one to do the work, then it will lose its internal energy or its internal energy would decrease, okay? And in this case, what if, well, if heat added onto the system would cause an increase in internal energy, heat removed from the system. Heat removed from the system would cause a decrease in internal energy. So again, the key terms here would be heat done by the system and, I'm sorry, work done by the system and heat removed from the system, which not only does it make sense in physics, but it, it logically makes sense. If there was to be a decrease in internal energy, both these concepts would have to be negative, okay? So this is a negative value and this is a negative value. And in this case, this is a positive value and this is a positive value. So the two positive values would cause an increase and two negative values would cause a decrease in internal energy. So if we look at our forces, I'm um, sorry, if we look at our choices, we see that there's a whole bunch talking about addition and removing and work done on and work done by. We just have to carefully look through these choices. We're looking for heat removed being the keyword and work done by the system. So if we look very carefully, we see that that would be our fourth choice, choice D. Heat is removed from the system, check, and work is done by the system, check. So those are the two concepts that we need to prove in order for there to be a decrease in internal energy. And that's it. All right, so we are moving on to the second unit of this, uh, to the second question, sorry, of the thermodynamics unit. And the question states as follows. A heat engine operating between 100 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius has an efficiency equal to 40%. If the maximum theoretical efficiency, oh, sorry, has efficiency equal to 40% of the maximum theoretical efficiency, how much energy does this engine extract from the hot reservoir in order to do 5,000 joules of mechanical work? Okay, a lot of quantities here. Let's again write down all that we are given. We are given um, a temperature cold, which we call the lower temperature to be 100 degrees Celsius, and the temperature H, which is the hot temperature, to be 700 degrees Celsius. We are also given that the efficiency is equal to 40% of the maximum efficiency. I'll explain what that is in a bit. We are also given the work, the final concept we have is the work to be 
5,000 joules. Uh, 5,000 joules of mechanical work. We are required to find the heat extracted from the hot reservoir, and we can represent that with a QH, or QN. Let's just call it QH because the heat of the hot reservoir. All right. This question is talking about a heat engine. A heat engine is a machine that uses heat, or actually uses the laws of thermodynamics in order to create work, okay? Let us draw out what a heat engine actually is. You have what you call the hot reservoir, okay? This hot reservoir has a certain temperature hot. In contact with this hot reservoir, we also have a cold reservoir, or a cold dump, a cold sink is what you actually call it. We call this Tc. The second law of thermodynamics, there's a lot of concepts about entropy, about spontaneous motion of heat, but one concept of entropy, uh, one concept of th the second law of thermodynamics states that energy spontaneously moves from a hot source to a cold source. Never the other way around, but energy is removed from the hot into the cold, okay? So, actually, let me draw this a little further apart so we can see this a little clearly. Okay, so what heat engine does is use this heat in the hot source to convert it into work. Okay, that is the purpose of a heat engine. It's to create work using the heat, using the heat from the hot reservoir. But another concept of thermodynamics is that you can never fully convert the hot energy into work. It's impossible to fully convert it because that would mess up the law of entropy. So Although not all of it can be converted to work, the rest would be converted to cold energy, or QC is how we represent it, okay? So it's not a perfectly efficient machine because not all of it, not all of the input energy is converted into an output energy. So speaking of efficiency, let us write down the formula of what efficiency is. The efficiency of a machine, which basically is saying, how well does this machine work, is equal to the work output divided by the work input, or the energy input. See, we input QH and we have an output of work, all right? This is the work, this is the energy we need, not this energy. We in fact wish this energy wasn't here. We want to convert it entirely into work. But this is just the excess or the, the output that we have. Anyway, to completely convert this QH into W is impossible, but some amount is converted and that's how we check the efficiency of the machine, okay? So again, we have to find efficiency and we actually have the work done in order to find this input energy or this energy from the hot reservoir, which is what we're looking for. But here we say, we see that we have efficiency is equal to 40% of, of the maximum efficiency. So we actually have to know the definition of maximum efficiency. Maximum efficiency, which is completely theoretical, it's impossible to find sufficiency, is given by the formula 1 minus Tc over Th, okay? It it's, doesn't even use the energy that we have, but the efficiency uses the temperatures of the two reservoirs, from the hot reservoir and from the cold sink. So let's find this efficient maximum, uh, this, this, this maximum efficiency. The maximum efficiency would be equal to 1 minus temperature cold. Well, we're supposed to change it into Kelvin in this case, so let us do that right over here. 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 373 Kelvin, and 70 degrees Celsius is equal to 973 Kelvin. Let's just plug that right in here. Temperature cold is 373 Kelvin, and temperature hot is 973 Kelvin. So once we do some math, we find that the efficient max is equal to approximately, so I should make this fancy equal sign, it's approximately equal to 0 0.617, okay? Something around that, okay? Again, this is not the efficiency we're looking for, we're actually looking for this efficiency. So efficiency would be equal to 40% of that, 40% of 0 0.617. So again, this efficiency is approximately equal to, I'm using a calculator here, it's approximately equal to 0.4. Zero point two four seven. Okay, um, I honestly don't know how you were expected to answer this question without a calculator because it requires a lot of decimal points and.
is kind of precise. But anyway, this is the efficiency that we got. Um, again, this isn't our final answer. We have to bring this concept right back here. So we see that the efficiency is equal to 0 0.247. And the work is equal to 5,000 joules. And we can divide this by QH, which is what we're looking for. And we'll find QH to be equal to 5,000 divided by 0 0.247. 5,000 divided by 0 0.247. It's something like 20,242.9. I'm using a calculator for this, but still I don't think that this is the exact value, but this is approximately 20,000 something is the value of the, the, the energy input or the energy coming from the hot sink. The important thing is not the numbers. The important thing here is to be able to understand this concept of efficiency of a heat engine. Whenever you have an engine or a machine of any sorts, you want it to be as efficient as possible. Unfortunately, the law of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics prevents this efficient to being 100% efficient. It even prevents it from gaining the maximum efficiency. It only has 40% of the maximum. So if you know how to calculate the maximum efficiency, which is this formula, you just multiply it by 40%, plug it right back into this formula of efficiency in order to find the input energy. So let's look at our choices here. We see the closest thing I could get is choice C, 20,259.32 joules, okay? It's not exactly my cancer, but it's close enough. You see that if you look at the other choices, you have 810 and 81 and 20, nothing remotely close to this number. All right, 20,259 is so far away from the other choices that you wouldn't get any mistake here. And that's how you answer the question.